This video explains what you get when you purchase our procedure for technical files. A technical file is the medical device file that's required by 1345 and by the European regulations. You can also use the same technical file to meet the requirements for Canada, Australia, and other countries as well. The procedure is SYS025. It also comes with three other documents in addition to the procedure. So I'm gonna go through all four of them so you know exactly what you're getting when you purchase this procedure. Okay, first the main procedure. It's the seventh draft of this procedure. We updated it for the new MDR. The updates were made by Matthew Walker. It's a 14 page document. And we've included all the references to the new annexes in the MDR, as well as the MB Med document, because sometimes you also wanna refer back to the previous one uh, because there might be some information in there as well. But all the requirements for creating a technical file would be specifically in annex one, two, three, four, 14, um, Annex 4 for the uh, Declaration of Conformity, and in the Risk Management file, which is also covered in Sections 1 through 9 of the GSPR. Here's a flow chart explaining what procedures are related to the technical file procedure. Here's who would be responsible for a review and approval of this procedure. Here's where Matthew indicated what he updated in terms of sections and references to the MDR the roles and responsibilities of each person that's conducting updates to a technical file. Here's the actual procedure, step-by-step -step of what should be in a technical file and how to create it. That goes on for quite a long section. Um, it's also broken up into the various sections of a technical file. So we have Annex 2 or Section 1 of, an MD, of a technical file that has all the technical documentation such as device description, uh, sterilization, biocompatibility, things like that. Um, section two, information supplied by the manufacturer. This would be your labeling and instruction for use. Section three, this would be design and manufacturing information. This would be flow charts of your manufacturing process that might be provided by you or a contract manufacturer. This is your actual GSPR or uh, essential requirements checklist if you're still using the terminology from the MDD. That's a, um, a requirement in Annex 2, but all the actual GSPRs are Annex 1. Then we have a risk benefit analysis. This would be part of your risk management file and your actual risk management file. That should be in Annex 2, Section 5. Then we have verification and validation of various uh, design aspects of your device. So that would be Section 6. Administrative details. Sometimes when you have a notified body auditor come in, they're looking for how many shifts does your company run? How many people do you have in your company? What are the locations? Do you have additional locations other than the one they're visiting? Who's the most senior manager? And we actually have a template for that. Um, I, I'll also include that in here. So we actually have technically four sub um, accessory documents in addition to this. That's GD211 or the regulatory report template or form 27. Then we have the technical documentation on post-market surveillance. That's a brand new requirement in the MDR. It's in Annex 3. And we also reference the new um, uh, standard that was created by AMI on post-market surveillance. I believe that's uh, ISO, AMI, AAMI ISO um, TIR 20416, I believe is the number of it. Then we have the post-market surveillance plan, which would be Article 84 in the MDR. We have the post-market surveillance report, that's 85. The PSUR, that's Article 86. And there's a lot more detail provided in our post-market surveillance procedure. So you don't have to rely just on this technical file uh, procedure for everything that you need. Then we have the monitoring and measuring procedure or uh, monitoring measuring section of this procedure that explains how you monitor and measure your technical files. And then we have training and retraining for technical uh, file uh, people that are responsible for updating the various sections of it, a risk-based approach to the procedure, and then the records. 
So you have your technical file or a DMR index, your declaration of conformity, your GSPR checklist, and the GD211 checklist as well. So that's everything that's included in this procedure. Now for the accessory documents. I'm not going to cover the GD211 um, in this particular video, but um, the other ones I think are important enough to include. We have declaration of conformity. I've included in green a couple of examples of different things that you would put in there, such as an authorized representative, um, what the risk classification is. That's just an example. Um, now it would be probably Rojas 3 for most of the companies, but indicating that you're compliant with the EU MDR and other possible directives such as the machine directive. So whatever directives you're um, compliant with, you would include those. What the name of your notified body is, I just put in a, a, a particular notified body that I've worked with. Um, then um, you would put in the certificate information and then you would have a signature and the date of issue. Next. We have the technical file index. So in this, we have a reference to the GHTF document and the EU MDR. So at each section, we have both references in here, depending on if you're trying to map this to the Canadian requirements and you, uh, Australian requirements, or you're trying to map this to the MDR, we have included both. And it goes line by line what the requirements are in the left column, and then the reference in the center. And then you would indicate what your document number is, how you're meeting that, what the revision of it is, and what pages. So if you make a change, you would provide a red line to your notified body so they would know what's changed. So this goes on for several pages. It's five pages in total. And then if you've filled in each of these rows, they might have more than one document reference, so it can become much larger. But that's much better than handing somebody 38 binders for a technical file, handing them uh, maybe a 10, 15 page index would be a lot easier for them to sample and then say, these are the documents I wanna, I wanna sample and review in more detail. And then we have the GSPR checklist. So Sharon Moreau recently updated this. Um, she changed the formatting a little bit and made it a little bit more clear what the different revisions were of the GSPR. Um, up here, it's got the date that it was created. And for the columns, you would indicate whether it's applicable or not to your device, what the method is used to meet the requirement, what the reference is to a um, harmonized standard, and then last but not least, the actual control document number. And it goes all the way up to uh, section 23, because this is much longer than the previous version for the MDD. So you can see this goes on for 21 pages. And then as you fill in each row, get longer. And this is the labeling section. And they actually have three different labeling sections, one for packaging, one for sterile barriers, and then one for the instruction for use in the last section. So that's everything that's included in this procedure. I hope that was helpful to you. If you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to contact me and schedule an appointment so we can go over in detail what you need and to make sure that this has everything you're looking for. We also have a video that explains how to do an audit of technical files that might also be helpful. I hope this was helpful and have a great day. Bye-bye.